Game number three here of the evening. The sun has finally gone down and it is time for the stars of the night to come out here for the final game of the Leslie Robinson Holiday Classic. My name is Caleb Breed, joined in the booth by Luke Terry and Luke. This is going to be a fantastic game. Trinity versus Chicago. Both these teams coming into here with winning records. Both these teams coming off of a win very recently. Chicago, of course, just beat Southwestern. Trinity beat Washington Lee last night. What are we looking for between these two teams coming into the final game of the Holiday Classic? Well, a bit of unfamiliar territory to start things off for Trinity, a Chicago team that's outside of the region. The bulk of their games so far this year have come against opponents in Region 10. A couple of squads out of the ASC and Harden Simmons and Mary Arden Baylor. Just a different style of play that they're going to see in a very good University of Chicago team. You mentioned coming in with a very impressive record, a high caliber team, and a good start on the defensive end right there. And so Chicago going it to get the ball here. Currently with it is Joe Barry. No, sorry, that is Bryce Hopkins. Pass it over to Barry. Back over to Hopkins. Being defended very well by Trinity, but left him wide open there in the corner. Does not fall. And rebound by Braxton Barry. It was Eamon Kane, the one who shot that last one. Green cannot put it up and in, and this game remains scoreless. But a fantastic game on our hands between both sides here today. Trinity has done a great job of limiting offensive scoring, and they will have a lot of work cut out for them here as they take on a pretty well-rounded threat against the Chicago Maroons as this one is lifted up and in for the first points of this game. That one good by Tanner Brown, who has been great at scoring so far this year, but a triple-headed monster in terms of offensive output for this Chicago team. Three players averaging double digits per game in terms of points, so they will have a lot of work to do whenever it comes to taking down this Maroon squad. And already a whistle here as the ball goes out of bounds. Chicago gonna hang on to it. And Chicago still just trying to find a rhythm on the offensive end of the floor. Some nice passing, their first couple of possessions. Just haven't gotten a shot to drop. Braxton Berry continuing some very stout defense, coming away with a block and forcing the shot clock violation ultimately. Possession back to Trinity, so a great start defensively. Barry going to be the anchor on that end of the court. Typically the Tigers electing to run some zones. We've seen a lot of 1-3-1, a little bit of a non-traditional 2-3-3-2 two, three, three, two that can kind of be swung either way. But in either situation, Braxton Barry going to be a rim protector in the middle of the floor. A very loud student section down there near the court as that shot goes up, banks off the rim and in. And Trinity taking a quick 4-0 lead here over the Chicago Maroons. These are two sides who have a good bit of history against each other, especially compared to some other teams that we have seen during this tournament. Washington Lee, of course, we have only played one game against them so far all time. Meanwhile, Chicago has been a fairly regular face during this Leslie Robinson Holiday Classic throughout the years. The shot clock is down to two, and now one shot is up and banks it in. Luke Smith able to get that one just before the buzzer as this shot goes up, does not fall. Christian Green on the put back and put back in. And so Trinity will now take a six to two lead. That was after Tanner Brown went right at Karowski. A little bit of an off arm discarding the defender, but no foul coming, got the shot up. And as you mentioned, Christian Green doing a nice job of cleaning things up, continuing the scoring with another basket in transition right there. Jacob Harvey leaving it behind him for the freshman. Christian Green leading this Tiger squad. He has done fantastic so far this season. And this crowd starting to get a little bit loud here as that ball thrown out of bounds. Just a little bit too wide there on that throw. You're getting a good look at that student section, but I don't think those are Trinity students. I think there happens to be a high school basketball team in town, in the crowd, 
Trinity brought him out for the evening, give him a look at the program. And anytime you get a full group of high school boys, things can get pretty rowdy. They're up on their feet already for this Trinity squad, and they're giving them a lot to cheer about as Tanner Brown with another nice reverse layup. Well, I mean, if they're high school students, it is still a student section as they're going to call the travel there. It can still be a student section, even if it isn't a college student section, I believe. True. You do have me on the technicality there, Caleb. <laughs> Either way, they are loud. They're making their presence known. I think they're a welcome addition. This game that's taking place over the Christmas holiday, of course. Not as many Trinity students in town, but still a very lively atmosphere here in Calgard. Both these teams coming into this game with winning records, having played 10 games each. Trinity 10-0 so far on the year, while Chicago 8-2. As that is a nice little shot banked in there for Jacob Harvey. As Trinity continues to extend their lead now 12-2 over the Maroons early. And one thing, the Maroons taking a long time to get into these offensive sets, taking a long time to even get the ball advanced over half court. In a large part, it's been Bryce Hopkins in the backcourt trying to advance the ball. Graduate student transfer that was announced during warm-up, so certainly a veteran presence, and he's having a lot of words for his teammates in the huddle right now. Chicago off to a pretty rough start, 12 to two. You saw the statistics flash on your screen there for just a minute. But what I've heard about this Chicago squad is that they're a little bit more methodical on the offensive end of the court. Not necessarily gonna run anyone out of the gym, but despite that, a very impressive near 76 points per game that they're averaging so far through those 10 games you talked about. They have had a great season so far, of course, eight and two. Their most recent game, a huge, just absolute flattening of Southwestern, uh, an SCAC opponent for Trinity University. A 70 to 45 final up in Georgetown before coming down to San Antonio to wrap up the Holiday Classic. Came in earlier this week was actually in the stands whenever they saw Trinity defeat the uh, Washington and Lee University Generals earlier on in yesterday's game. And now they are getting to experience firsthand here a very, very potent Trinity offense and defensive combined unit that has not only scored a lot of points, but has done a great job of limiting opponent scoring as fighting for everything they have down low. Chuck continuing to fight down, or shot from the top of the key, does not fall, rebound Braxton Berry, throws it back in and keeps it Trinity ball. Shot is up from outside and it falls. A huge shot, Jacob Milhouse with the shot from three, just continuing to pour it on here. And they're gonna call a travel here. Joe Barry looking around, doesn't believe that he traveled, but the ref saw it. And Trinity is gonna set up with great position here just under the basket. Yeah, great job so far early on. I think that Trinity's certainly in the head of the Maroons. The Chicago squad, knowing that there's going to be full court pressure there, a little bit of a rush to get the ball inbounded, and I think it created that turnover from Barry. But right now, everything working on this side of the floor. Milhouse knocking down that last three, just rising up in transition. Harvey finds himself blocked there by Luke Smith, the big 6'9 freshman out of Richmond, Virginia. But it will remain Trinity ball here as we get the ball run back to the court. Still no substitutions this early on in the game as Milos is gonna go up, he's gonna put it in, and he's gonna go to the charity stripe for an and one. Just great play design right here. I don't know if this is option number one, but Milhouse acting like he's gonna come around a screen, moving towards the top of the key, got his defender to commit. And it was Kina that was in pursuit, and once he realized 
Millhouse, that is, that he now was right on his tail, stuck his foot in the ground, turned back the other direction, wide open back door, and then created that contact, jumped into the defender just a little bit, but earned the trip to the charity stripe and finishes the three-point play with a free throw. So 17-2, Trinity leads over the Chicago Maroons. It's something that Coach Jimmy Smith talked about whenever we got to talk to him earlier on today. This is a team that really prides itself on its offense, has for the last few years, but they have worked on their defense this year, and it has paid off massively for them so far. Of course, an undefeated 10-0 record, but also on top of that, they are doing great at stifling opponent scoring so far here during this 2023-24 season. Yeah, and a big aspect of that is just the amount of size and the length that they have on the court. Talked a little bit about Braxton Berry. Christian Green, number two, those bright red short shoes at the top of your screen. A huge contributor on this end of the court. The 6'6 freshman makes that close out right there, but it does not matter. Thomas Kurowski rising up and knocking that one down to get Chicago back in the scoring column after what has been a slow start was not at all deterred by the closeout of the long wing right there, and it's exactly what Chicago needed. On the other end, Kurowski providing some course defense. Green with another miss, a little strong. Chicago trying to find a little bit of a rhythm now. And so Kurowski moving around, pump fakes, gives it off to his teammate who takes the shot, does not fall. Bryce Hopkins cannot get that one to land. Chicago shooting 22% from the field right now, two of nine so far on the young game. Barry outside thought about this shot. Now gonna hand it off to Brown. Brown back to Barry. Barry puts it up and puts it in for two. Five to 19, your score here. Tigers leading very handily over the Chicago Maroons so far here in the early going of this game. At the moment it's Bryce Hopkins with the ball, passes it around. Hopkins back with it, puts it up, and it falls. Bryce Hopkins, number 33, the graduate student out of Palatine, Illinois, is gonna get that one as Christian Green's pass intended for Jacob Milhouse ended up bouncing off the hands there of Philip Lawrence and out of bounds. So Trinity will retain possession and we have almost a complete line swap here. Down on that other end though, Bryce Hopkins last make a much needed one. More often than not, Chicago has really kind of struggled a, a bit to get the ball up the court facing this Trinity pressure. One thing that it's created is those really quick shots that are coming off. Big time for Hopkins to have knocked that one down, not settling for anything in that scenario. A really good look from the outside. Green lost the ball there on the push as this shot is up from the corner. It is up and it is good. Thomas Karowski doing a lot for the Maroons so far this evening. As Balo is gonna drive it down, trying to get past a stiff defense, puts it up and puts it in. Philip Lawrence was the one there in defense, but it does not matter as the freshman, Dean Balo, showing off why he has been so special so far this year. Pass there intended for Philip Lawrence, ends up going a bit awry. Then there was a bit of miscommunication and Trinity is gonna take back over right in front of that student section that you are seeing on your screen right now. Abdullah Roberts, the one throwing it in there to Zach Fenn. And it was almost a full line change for this Trinity squad, but despite that intensity not changing, the shot making not going anywhere. Dean Balo rising up from a couple feet behind the arc and knocking that one home. Nothing but the strings. Dean Balo has been electric so far this year. The fantastic freshmen of Balo and Green have been doing wondrous work for the Tigers as, fortunately, Balo gonna get called for a double dribble here. Didn't quite see it, but the official was a little bit closer, so. Might have just accidentally had a little mental slip there, but still a fantastic start for the Trinity University Tigers. A 24 to 11 lead over the Chicago Maroons here very early on in this game. 
Yeah, absolutely electric out of the gate. And it's exactly what we've come accustomed to seeing from this Trinity squad. Getting out and running in transition. They've had a lot of great looks at the basket. A hot start from three-point territory as well. It's a big part of the lead that they have right now. They've only taken one from the outside because of the ability to get out and run. 16 attempts, they've made 11 of those shots. Already more attempts on the evening than the University of Chicago, who's turned the ball over five times in the early going. But over the last couple of minutes, kind of settled in nicely. Hopkins knocking down that three and Karowski knocking down a couple of his own. I think they made three consecutive shots from beyond the arc. It's a big part of the reason that they went on that run. And so just coming back from the media timeout now, again, your score 24 to 11. Looking at some of the leading scores here, Jacob Milhouse has done a great job. Seven points so far for him today. Of course, he is sitting on the bench at the moment. Meanwhile, for Chicago, it is Thomas Karowski, six points of their 11 so far for him today. And we will look to see whether or not the rest of Chicago will start to step up or whether or not Karowski will start to run away with it. A little bit of a foul there being called on Zach Fenn, the sophomore of Covington, Louisiana. The 6'2 guard has had a pretty good season so far. He's more known for his defensive contributions, known for really throwing a lot of chaos into the mix. The so-called chaos creator there I believe I was told that he tied the school record for most steals in a game in yesterday's affair. Absolutely all over the court. <clears throat> Came into this game right there. He was playing on top defensively, point of attack. Going to wreak a lot of havoc, wreck a lot of havoc throughout the course of the game. So he's certainly a guy to keep an eye on as this one continues. Balo driving, puts it up, cannot get it to go. Shot was blocked there by Philip Lawrence. As we're going to get a substitution, on comes Bryce Hopkins and off comes Jackson Piotrowski. And so Balo going to be the one throwing this one in here. Ball goes up to Abdullah Roberts. The entire Trinity starting lineup has now been taken off. As Fenn goes up, cannot get it to fall. Rebound by Trinity. Puts it up and puts it in. A fantastic physical play there by Grant Jacobs, the junior forward out of New Braunfels. Great job just tracking that one down. He found himself in a kind of awkward position. Looked like he was trying to get it to Ty Williams and he recognized, oh, I have an open layup and he took it. And great job down the other way. Williams continuing to work hard. Just great hustle that we saw out of him in yesterday's affair, really all season long. Just pushing opponents' big men down low. Unfortunately, a little bit of contact right there, and that'll send Maroon to the free throw line. That's number 13, Kena, that's back into the game. He started for the Maroons after a foul call him on him a couple of minutes ago. He went to the bench, but back in there now and knocking down both of those shots at the charity stripe. Fenn driving down, passes the ball outside. Now ball goes back inside for Williams. Williams moving around. He's going to try and put it up himself. It does not fall. Fight for the rebound there. It was in the hands of Chicago, but it ends up back in the hands of Grant Jacobs. It was Joe Barry, the one who originally had the ball before he lost it, and Jacobs was just in the right spot at the right time. Balo going to get the steal now. Fakes the pass, puts the ball up, does not fall. Rebound, Jacobs again puts it back up, still trying to get it, and it finally ends up in the hands of Zach Fenn, who now slows everything down, starting to try and control this offense now. Gives it back up to Williams. Williams back over to Balo. Balo Abdullo Roberts, and Roberts from three, he nails it! A little bit of a celebration from Roberts, kind of looking up, throwing his hands up, a smile on his face as he looked to the bench. Struggled from three in the early going this year, finally getting one to fall, but very quickly Chicago answering Joe Barry, knocking down a three of his own and another timeout. 
able to cut into that Trinity lead just a little bit, but it's still at 15 right now. That breaks a three minute streak for Chicago of no field goals made. And you mentioned, of course, Abdullah Roberts having a little bit of struggles from behind the three-point line. He has not had the best season at all. In fact, he, or in fact, yeah, he has only gone basically one and a third, or 13% from beyond the line so far this season. And it has definitely been a very difficult time for him to make three-pointers, but you know, whenever you're up like this, it feels like you can be a little bit more liberal with your shots, and he definitely was there, and it worked out for him. Yeah, when you're up like this, it's usually because you're making those shots. Hot shooting start from the floor, continuing for Trinity. They like to take the three ball. They've only shot two of them so far in this first half, but both of those were makes as Bela went to the basket, got blocked, and Chicago on a run out right now, moving a little bit more quickly in the last few minutes. They're going to say that the ball was tipped out of bounds, and so it will remain with Chicago. In talking with Coach Jimmy Smith, who you can see just above the zero and the one there on your TV screens, got to talk to him about this Chicago team earlier on in the week and he mentioned that both of the teams that they would be playing in this tournament, Washington and Lee and of course Chicago who you see right now were going to be a little bit bigger than Trinity. He said that both of these teams would be a little bit more athletic. Chicago would be the most athletic of them and like you're seeing here, he sort of anticipated that there would be a little bit of struggles for the opposition in terms of shooting the ball but the the biggest key to victory that he mentioned was, of course, getting the offensive rebounds, limiting their second chance points. That, er, that was going to be the difference during this game. And so far, it has paid out. Trinity out rebounding the Maroons 14 to eight right now with eight minutes and 30 seconds to go in this first half as we have a few substitutions coming in and out. When you talk about rebounding, hard not to mention one of the key pieces that's missing for this Maroons team. Arish Bandal, our big six foot nine center, started five games. He's played in six so far this season. He's been out. So we talked about the fact that the Chicago team's played 10 games, so he's missed a couple in a row. Huge size advantage, listed at 6'9 on the roster. Was down on the court before this game, but felt like he was much larger than that on the court. And when you're losing the rebounding battle early on in a game, point to something like that, I'm sure he is sorely missed. Shot is up from the outside, does not fall. Scramble for the rebound, it's Balo. Balo and Roberts on the two on one. Puts it up and puts it in for an extra two. It was Thomas Kurowski in the defense there. And even though he's had a pretty good day so far, he just could not catch up to the Trinity fast break. Fans wanting a travel there, not gonna get one as Kurowski gets it down low. Pass down to the corner and they're gonna say that he stepped out of bounds. Eamon Kina, the one who is gonna get tacked with that turnover. And now we are going to get a media timeout. Trinity continuing a very, very strong start in this one. Great out of the gates. And then we mentioned a couple of consecutive three balls that Chicago knocked down. Trinity absorbing that punch and just responding even stronger now out ahead in this one by 17 points continuing their hot shooting 55 percent from the field made both of their threes all of their free throws chicago just 29.4 percent so far and circle that number at the bottom of the screen eight turnovers just struggling to get good looks and sometimes down the court struggling to get shots off at all it has been a very, very rough day for the Chicago Maroons. Of those eight turnovers, they have allowed 17 points. So basically every time that Trinity has gotten a turnover, they have capitalized and turned it into points. 
here during this game, and it is a big reason why Chicago currently finds themselves trailing, in fact, exactly by 17. So without those turnovers, this would be a tie game, but instead, Trinity finds themselves with a pretty healthy lead. And with 7.43 left to go here before halftime. Harvey takes it down, pass over to Braxton Berry. The entirety of the starting lineup, except for Jacob Milhouse, is back in this game. Milhouse has been replaced by Grayson Hare. Berry driving down, puts the ball up, does not fall. In the fight for the rebound there, Jackson Piotrowski, the one who went down and the one who will get fouled by Braxton Berry. Just got a text from one of our mates in the commentary booth, not able to be with us right now, Reed Rosales, letting me know this Chicago team that's averaged just 9.7 turnovers on the year to this point. So to already have eight in this one, a pretty significant number, still seven minutes to go in the first half here. So something to continue to monitor. Is this Chicago Maroons team going to be able to clean things up and keep control of the ball? Right there, Christian Green going really strong to the basket. Got fouled on the way up by Thomas Karowski. So Green will head to the free throw line. Christian Green, the one who will be going to the line. And of course, the turnovers, part of it you can put down to Chicago offensive errors, but also whenever I got to talk to Coach McGrath earlier on in the week, he mentioned how talented this Trinity team is and and also mentioned how assertive the defense is. One of the things that stuck out to me the most was that he er, is that he said uh, essentially that this defense really tries to take you out of your comfort zone. And so it's something that teams have to get used to pretty early on whenever they play. And it's likely the reason why Chicago is starting to see a lot of these unexpected turnovers starting to seep in a little bit. As you can see, it is a very, very active zone defense that coach Jimmy Smith and this team have utilized. As the shot clock goes down to two, shot is no good, but it is rebounded by Chicago. Second chance opportunity, no good, and rebounded by Trinity. Shot is up from three, and it is good. Tanner Brown with a huge three to continue to extend this lead. And Trinity now takes a 36 to 16 advantage over the University of Chicago Maroons. And that last possession, University of Chicago having to work incredibly hard. That defense, that zone just swarming, staying in front, moving side to side, forcing a shot as the shot clock was expiring. And then down on this end, Tanner Brown just very casually walking into a three-pointer and knocking it down. Pretty em emblematic of how things are going for each of these squads. It's just been easy for Trinity to this point. And for the University of Chicago, things very difficult to generate good offense. Shot up, no good, and they're gonna whistle that. Kind of a late whistle there, but it will be Piotrowski going to the line. That foul is gonna go on number zero. That will be Braxton Berry for the Trinity Tigers, and that is not a good thing to hear because that's already gonna be a second, and with five and a half minutes to go in this first half, you can see movement down on the court near the benches, and it looks like we will be seeing Jacob Milhouse coming on. Actually, Milhouse coming on for Grayson Hare, or no, sorry, Braxton Berry. Hare. Kind of changing his mind at the last minute, it looked like. Hare was originally going off, but, but then it was decided that Berry would be the one going off instead. This shot from outside, no good. Rebound by Milhouse. So with the advantage of fresh legs, fresh, or fresh arms, he's gonna take this shot, and he is gonna nail it from three. Nobody around, a little bit of a deep three, and that was a fantastic shot. Milhouse already breaking into double-digit points here on the evening in Trinity University. Still not a ton of three-point field goals attempted by this Tiger squad. Just four for Trinity, as opposed to 14 for the University of Chicago. But each squad has made four. So just great efficiency from the outside for Trinity. That time, Petrowski 
rising up from the mid-range, knocking one home, and then forcing a turnover right, right there and coming back the other way. Hard to the basket was Kurowski trying to rise up and throw one down, but all of the Maroons running in transition, they cleaned it up and got the second chance points. Chicago moving with the ball down now. Advantage, or, or advantage now under 20, but it is still a pretty hefty advantage for the Tigers. As this ball will go out of bounds on the missed shot. And whenever you talk about this Trinity Tigers offense, you really have to mention just the three ball. They have loved to use the deep ball so far this season. Of course, one of the big things that I remember was during the Austin College game, over 53 pointers attempted during that game. It was a wild show from there. But so far they've been very, very efficient with their shots as Christian, er, as Christian Green gets the nice little finger roll finish. And Chicago will try and cut back into this lead. A 20 point advantage for the Tigers. Deep shot from three, no good. Rebound Christian Green. And he's gonna get held up and there will be a whistle. Looks like this foul is going to go against Alexander Batiste. As we do have a timeout, as we're now under four minutes, getting ready for the final media timeout of this half. Luke, what have you seen so far out there on the court? It's been a very, very fast-paced game. Looking up at the board, all of a sudden, under four minutes left. This is our last media timeout. Not a lot of fouls either way. University of Chicago taking four free throws. They've been called for four fouls. Trinity, just three free throws, called for five fouls. And in part, that lends to both of these teams getting out and running. That's certainly something Trinity wants to do. I'm not so sure how much the University of Chicago wants to do that. I talked about it a little bit earlier. What I had been told was that this was a little bit of a methodical offense, taking their time to bring it up the court, cognizant of the pressure that Trinity was putting on full court. But as this half has gone along, they've certainly picked up the pace a little bit, getting out and running, trying to create some easier looks in transition. But when you speed yourself up, I think it lends very naturally to turning the ball over more. Maybe one explanation for not the cleanest half in the world, at least by the standards of this University of Chicago team. Getting ready for a fantastic end to this first half. Coach McGrath, of course, very complimentary, not just of this Trinity team, but also of his own team. Mentioned, of course, how competitive this team has been. They had a little bit of a tough struggle earlier on in the season. Dropped two straight games, both of them coming on the road, but he mentioned that this is a very, very strong team, very competitive team, made up mostly of experienced players as Green almost ended up taking that one to the house. But Chicago getting their feet back yet again. Did have a five on four there for a moment as Green was running to get back. And now it's back to a five on five. Ball outside at the moment. Pass it around, down low in the corner, takes the shot, it is good! Joe Barry, the one who finally gets it in for Chicago. And one interesting thing to note, Chicago, three of their last 13 shots have gone in. They have not had a very good time whenever it comes to the shooting. They are definitely starting to struggle, and a big reason why there is a 29% on that field goal percentage. Yeah, just eight of 28 in the half as a whole. Something that we've seen over the last several affairs, or at least a couple of them here in San Antonio as part of this Leslie Robinson Holiday Classic, are teams jumping out to early leads, Trinity doing so again right here. And more often than not, the team that's done that has controlled the pace, really controlled the way the game's played the rest of the way, and kind of cruised to victories. One thing that we've talked about in those games, though, is how can the team that's trailing, as University of Chicago is, even though they make another three right there, that time it's Kina on the wing knocking that one home, 
how can they play coming into the locker room? Can they finish this half strong the next two minutes, 20 seconds? and really cut into this lead, make it something more manageable when they're coming out to start the second half. A little bit of a miscommunication there. Christian Green unable to hang on to the ball as it went through his hands there just a little bit. As now driving, passes it back outside. Ball was tipped just a little bit there. Keenan with the ball right now, moving around, trying to find somebody open. Shot clock now down at 10. So Chicago needs to get something going here. Passes it back up top, thinks about the shot, doesn't take it, five, four, three on the shot clock, two, one, takes it from the corner and it is good. A huge shot for the University of Chicago. Looked like it was going to end up in a shot clock violation and instead it ends up in three points. Fantastic play there by Philip Lawrence is now down low. Jacob Milhouse puts it up, cannot get it to fall. Rebound there once again by Keenock. He's been pretty much everywhere so far over the last couple of minutes. Shot is up, no good. Defended there by Grant Jacobs, and they're going to call a whistle on the floor. Looks like this one is going to go against Milhouse. Yeah, didn't see a lot in real time right there. Whatever it was, referees had eyes on it down on the court. A very nice last couple of possessions for the University of Chicago. Of course, that three ball being knocked down by Philip Lawrence at the shot clock expiration. Talked about methodical offense. A lot of steps right there as Joe Barry was tracking that one down, running into the backcourt was catching it and trying to slow himself, chopping his feet at the same time. But the referees instead calling a foul against Trinity. We saw Joe Barry do the same thing earlier in this half. He got tagged with a travel violation and turnover. Instead, he'll get the benefit of a call here and head to the free throw line. First shot there for Barry is good, so he will go to the line for the second. For Chicago already in the bonus. Chicago has committed five fouls, so the next one will result in a free throw or in a one and one for Trinity as well with 1.22 to go. Fenn with the ball at the moment. Looking around, gets it over to Abdullah Roberts. Back over to Tanner Brown, one of the starters for this game. Fenn back up top to Ty Williams, and now back over to Brown. Brown now going to drive. Brown's going to put it up, and it is going to be blocked by a host of Chicago Maroons. As now Keenaw passes it out over to Lawrence, back over to Keenaw. Shot clock now under 20. As Keenaw thought about the shot, does not take it, passes it back outside, back over to Keenaw, being defended well by Harvey. Williams down low in defense, manages to stop the shot, and it's taken away by Abdullah Roberts. There, there on the shot was Bryce Hopkins. It's a great recovery from Ty Williams, getting back to Hopkins before he could get an attempt off, putting his body on the big man, and just not allowing for him to elevate off the ground. Tigers run a couple of seconds off the clock right there. And then Jimmy Smith electing to take a timeout, draw something up. 22.2 on the game clock here in San Antonio. And just 15 seconds remaining on the shot clock. But plenty of time for the Tigers to get off a good look to close out the first. And so with 22.2 seconds remaining, like to go over just a little bit of history for you guys. Of course, these two teams are not complete strangers. They played six games over the course of most close histories. Chicago currently leads this series uh, with a two and four record all time. One and one here in San Antonio. The last win for Trinity came back in 2007 but the last few years have resulted in Chicago victories. The last meeting, a 79 to 67 victory for the University of Chicago. As we are gonna get a whistle here and it will be 
a shooting foul. That one is going to go against number three, Alexander Batiste. Somehow, no foul coming on the contact from the drive of Christian Green. Ball gets knocked loose, somehow winds up in the hands of Abdul Roberts. It's pretty stout defense by the University of Chicago on the inside. Looked like everyone in the interior went upright, but the referee saw some contact, sending Roberts to the free throw line, knocked down the first. Second on the way and good. So Trinity ending a little bit of a scoring drought of their own. It had been an 8-0 run from the University of Chicago. Driving, cannot get it to go. And it's gonna go out of bounds here. Trinity fans wanted it to go their way, but unfortunately it does remain in the hands of Chicago. Throwing it in is gonna be Philip Lawrence, the 6'2 freshman out of New York, New York. Driving, throws it out, throws it up, and cannot get it to go. And so that will be the end of the half. Kind of snuck up on us fairly quickly there. 46-32 as we head into the locker rooms. Trinity started out at pretty hot. Chicago kind of warmed up there towards the end of the half, but it is still a massive advantage for the Trinity Tigers here as they lead over Chicago. What are your thoughts on how that first half sort of played out for both sides? Well, it was characterized by that hot start from Trinity. 19 of 35 shooting from the field, almost 55%. A perfect four for four from deep. They didn't force any of those looks really, although a couple of them came in transition as Tanner Brown knocked in or walked into one and knocked it down confidently. On the other side, the University of Chicago kind of up and down half, but what we talked about at that last media timeout, how do you end this last period, this last little snippet of a half? Can you do it on a positive note, cut into the lead just a little bit, and give yourself a more manageable job when you come out in the second half? That's exactly what they did. It was 20 points, the margin of the difference in this game a couple of minutes ago. Chicago bringing that down to just 14 right now. So cutting into it a little bit, a little bit more manageable, splitting it up into several minute stretches at a time gonna be key. How, how do you attack the first five minutes of the second half and so on from there? This is definitely a game of runs in Chicago. Gonna be hoping for a couple of runs to go their way as they come out of the halftime break. But we're gonna go into a little bit of a halftime break here. 13 and a half minutes until the second half resumes. Don't go anywhere. We will be right back here on the Tiger Network to wrap up the final day and the final game of this thrilling Leslie Robinson Holiday Classic. Don't go anywhere. My name is Caleb Bree, joined by Luke Terry, and we will see you all in just a bit.
Good afternoon, or good evening, excuse me, everybody, and welcome back to the final game here of the Leslie Robinson Holiday Classic here on the Tiger Network. Caleb Reed joined in the booth by Luke Terry. And Luke Trinity currently leading 46-32 after that first half. What did you see during that first half, and what do you think we're going to be seeing as we come out of the halftime break and, and into the second? Well, I saw a very hot start for this Trinity team, and I think the way that the University of Chicago comes out will be very indicative of how this one finishes. Need a very strong start here in a game that they're currently trailing by 14 points. Not going to get it there trying to prolong this possession, but it's not going to happen. Trinity with a strong start on the defensive end. They need to keep rolling the same way that they were offensively, getting out and running in transition taking advantage of opportunities from the outside whenever they do present themselves. Harvey with it right now up top. Tried to push into that defense there, led by Thomas Karowski. Decides better of it, and now with help, decides to push in a little bit. Ball out to Christian Green, who lofts it up from the free throw line. Shot clock was down at one before he got that one off, so pretty fortunate that he did manage to get it off. Unfortunately, it did not go in for the Tigers, but still a shot that ends up going over to Chicago. Barry with the ball right now, just trying to move around 11 on 11. Brown defending Barry as thought about the shot, does not take it, loses the ball, and now down low, puts the ball up, does not fall again. Barry the one with the rebound. As Christian Green goes up, puts it up, and cannot get it to go in. Rebound there by Luke Smith. Smith passes it over, almost taken away there by Jacob Harvey, as this is a very high-speed Trinity defense. And a little bit of a mistake there as Joe Barry, not Braxton Barry, Joe Barry is the one who has his ankles just a little bit too close to that sideline and it will result in a turnover going over to the Trinity side. So now we saw several times in that first half and have already seen once out of the Union of Chicago as Harvey puts that one up and knocks it home. Perfect from three continues for this Trinity squad. Now five for five from the outside. New Chicago electing to just eat up a lot of the shot clock on some of these possessions, not in a hurry, but in a game that they're continuing to trail and then probably need to pick up the intensity and generating good looks. Shot up from outside, no good for the Maroons. This one is stripped, taken away. Joe Barry able to get the ball there, does not take the shot and he is getting double teamed here by the Tigers. A lot of Tiger fans wanting a travel, not going to get one here. Going up, cannot get it to fall, gets his own rebound, puts it up and puts it back in. Bryce Hopkins, the graduate student out of Palatine, Illinois, the one to get it up and get it in off of his own miss. 49-34, your score here as the gap is now 15 points in favor of the home team, Trinity Tigers. Great second effort from Hopkins right there. Deterred originally, but gathers his own miss, puts it back up and in. Feels like he's been a big part of the effort for the University of Chicago so far. Saw him in that first half, bringing the ball up the court a little bit. He knocked down one of his attempts from the outside. I think he's leading this team in field goals attempted, but he's just three out of 12, just one of six from deep. Really need to see him get going. But outside of that, he's done pretty well nevertheless. Seven points added so far, another seven rebounds. So a solid effort on the glass despite his struggle scoring the basketball. So Luke Smith has just come off believe it was not Eamon Kino, the one who came off of the bench because he has been in since the end of halftime, but still a fantastic job there to get the two free throws there for Millhouse. Chicago pushing down and throws this one out of bounds. So Trinity going to take back over here. Hopkins continuing to bring the ball down the court a little bit for the Chicago squad. 
Standing in there at six foot four, not really the traditional guard we're used to seeing at this level, not blowing by anybody. Now he has four turnovers and Trinity continuing to absolutely blister from beyond the arc. Knocking down another one right there was Jacob Milhouse and Trinity now six for six. A fantastic day shooting from outside. This one stripped, taken away. Christian Green gonna go up with it and he is gonna get fouled hard. Went up for it and that was a very, very hard hit there on the ground. I think he went down rather hard, but it was Hopkins you see at the top of the screen trying to just time this one up perfectly. It looks like he got a lot of the ball. Just the way that momentum was being gathered right there created that tough crash to the ground. Good to see Green get up without really any issues it looks like. Green spins, puts it back up and puts it in using some of that fantastic quick twitch ability that he has. It is so hard to handle his speed and strength whenever he has the ball and it is one of the reasons why he is Trinity's leading scorer so far this season. Ball back outside with, Ed, or, uh, with uh, Ezra Moose. At the moment, Chicago just trying to pass it around, trying to find some holes in this Trinity defense where there aren't a lot. Ball goes to Brown. Brown, ball is a little bit too far for him. Able to get it back up and get it back in for the score. Tanner Brown gets his 11th point of the evening so far. A fantastic start for everybody on this Tiger offense. Fans wanted to travel there, did not get one. And instead, that is Barry moving down with the ball. Lawrence back over to Barry. Barry with the three, cannot get it to go. A little bit short off the iron. Fight for the rebound. And thrown back in there. That was Moose, but it's taken in by Trinity. Over to Green. Green puts it up and puts it in. And now Christian Green has his 11th point on the evening as well. And everybody just sharing the basketball for this Trinity squad right now. 12 assists make that 13 on 24 made field goals. A very balanced effort. Milhouse leading the way with 15 on five of six from the field. Tanner Brown, as you mentioned, just moved to 11. Christian Green getting 11 with that last basket as well. So three Tigers in double digits. Perhaps no one really jumping off the box score at the moment, but everyone making contributions for this home squad. An incredibly well-rounded team effort for the Trinity Tigers here in Calgard so far as we get a look at those replays. And now we get a look at the stats and, er, and the biggest number that stands out to you, of course, has to be that 100% three-point percentage for the Trinity Tigers. Six of six so far today from deep, led of course by Jacob Milhouse. One for both Jacob Harvey and Tanner Brown. And it has been just a fantastic day from deep. The other three scorers being Dean Balo, the freshman, and Abdullah Roberts, the big lanky senior. And this has been a team that has really, really spread the ball around very well. And it's something that we got to talk to Coach Smith about earlier on this season, or earlier on this week. And one of the things that he mentioned, of course, was whenever he came into this team, his very first season being the 2020-2021 season, so of course the COVID year, he inherited a roster with 26 players on it, and so that large roster size has really allowed him to sort of trim it down a little bit, figure out the players that fit the system, and so far that system has been scoring a lot of threes, but it has really allowed Trinity a lot of freedom in being able to pick and choose the players that they want, especially since getting players into Trinity in the first place is so difficult due to the academic concerns that this school brings with it sometimes. Yeah, very rigorous academic environment here, but they've managed to find quite a few skilled basketball players. 
A very interesting roster makeup. You mentioned the fact that he inherited a group of players. He brought a couple with him. Right now, the roster very different from the one that he had when he started his career here a couple of years ago at Trinity. Of course, coming over from Millsaps College, uh, kind of storied or, or veteran Division three coach starting his career at Texas Lutheran, of course, playing as well as Mary Harden Baylor, doing a ton with this group, something we talked about earlier in the day, just how the focus has shifted for this squad has been very interesting to observe. Last year, a lot of emphasis on the offensive end of the court, and then over the offseason, he said he just wanted to add more wrinkles, throw more things at opposing teams from a defensive perspective, and now they have a group that is absolutely bought in a lot of zone defense they run but they are absolutely running it to perfection right now and it's showing in the early part of the year and of course the coach that Jimmy Smith came in to replace Pat Cunningham interestingly enough was the former boss of Mike McGrath the head coach currently of this University of Chicago team because Pat, Cumming, or Pat Cunningham actually left Chicago to come here and coach at Trinity. And so it is a very, very interesting sort of connection as Green thought about elevating, instead does not. And Harvey going to get the ball here back down to Christian Green. Braxton Berry with it at the moment. Berry spin move, puts it up and puts it back in for two. 62-34 year score, but it is just very interesting to see how interconnected some of these Division Three schools can be here at some of the lower levels of NCAA sports. Yeah, two very talented teams here. Two great athletic departments at the Division Three level in the year of Chicago. And also Trinity as Hopkins riding the ship just a little bit right there, knocking down another shot from beyond the arc. Moves from one from six to two for seven. So definitely going to need him to get hot as Trinity is now ahead in this one by 27 points. It's a very tall task ahead of the Maroons with just over 13 minutes remaining. That one is strong off the back iron and Tanner Brown and this Trinity squad have no end in sight, no plans to slow it down. That foul there is going to go against Bryce Hopkins there for swatting against Brown as he went up there. And so Tanner Brown gonna go to the line for two here. So far this season, Tanner Brown has been pretty okay from the free throw line, all things considered. 29 of 43, shooting about 67% on the season. Of course, ends up missing that first one. As you can hear the the crowd there in the background. It is always great to get a crowd out here for for the games that you know don't exactly have a lot of Trinity student support due to the breaks. Always great to get as much noise in here as possible. As that is a pass down low, shot up from the wing. Cannot get it to fall. Rebound there, Christian Green. And now out to Jacob Harvey. Three on one, might want to just back out here and let the offense set itself up. Christian Green gonna drive, gonna put it up. What an incredible shot by Christian Green. I did not even think that he was gonna be able to get that ball up there and instead he gets it up and in. As that is a deep shot from the corner, does not go. Milhouse the one able to corral that one in. Shot out by Tanner Brown, does not fall. Rebound Braxton Berry, taken back in there by Joe Berry. And now Barry being heavily defended by Jacob Harvey. Pass outside, shot up from the top. It is good, a big three by Jackson Piotrowski. And this score is now 40 to 68. Deep shot, oh, almost got it in there for Jacob Harvey. Rattled around the rim for just a second before shooting back out. That would have been an incredible three if it had gone in. But instead, Ed, or Ezra, Ezra Moose, the one with it at the moment. Pass it over to Barry. Brown versus Barry at the moment. Now passes it down towards the elbow. 
Moose looking around, trying to figure it out. Now takes a shot from outside, does not fall. Rebound Christian Green as that one bounced off the iron and straight back down. Unfortunately for Trinity with that last miss, ends perfection from three-point shooting on the evening, but I don't think you're gonna be too upset about that. A fantastic day so far from behind the line, regardless of the miss. Six for eight so far today from deep as Christian Green goes up, cannot get it to go, and it will be taken in by the Chicago, or by the University of Chicago Maroons. Jackson Piotrowski, the one who came up with that ball. Right now, Moose with it being defended very heavily by Tanner Brown. Gets back over to Piotrowski. Piotrowski versus Barry. Driving Barry down. Piotrowski looking around, and that pass is intercepted. Jacob Harvey coming back the other way with it. Pushes down, and now going to run around. Outside, wide open shot by Milhouse. No good. Rebound by Kurowski. And Kurowski moving around. Spin move, still keeping it alive and still keeping a tough defense. Shot is up from the corner, it's no good. Gets the rebound, puts it up and cannot get it to go there, Alexander Batiste. And so now Batiste is gonna go to the line for two there off of the Trinity foul. Uh, unsure who they put that foul on and we did just get confirmation. It is gonna be on Jacob Milos. That will be his second of the day. So nobody in too much foul trouble yet for either side. Kurowski, the one leading Chicago with two, and two players on Trinity, both Christian Green and, uh, or no, sorry, both Braxton Berry and Jacob Milhouse with two on Trinity. All the others have zero. So, so far, it already feels like this second half has gone by pretty quickly as well as we have already hit the 12-minute media timeout. Yeah, I think this is that media timeout coming quite a while after the fact. No stoppages in play, so nearly halfway through the second period. And Trinity has just grown their lead here, a 22-8 advantage in this half. Becoming the theme here in San Antonio during this Leslie Robinson Holiday Classic. A couple of pretty wide margins of victory. St. Thomas out of Houston, Texas, another SCAC member coming over, winning a big game yesterday against Luther, who came down from Iowa, winning again today against William and Lee. Both of those by about 30 points or so. The third time we've seen a margin similar to this. And the third time that we've seen a game carried out the same way that this one has. Trinity just jumping out to that early lead, just absolutely blistering from beyond the arc and really controlling that, controlling things since then. First shot is no good. As, as you can hear some of the noises in the background there, that shot is good to make this a 68-41 ball game. And at the moment, Trinity just trying to move it around right now. A lot of substitutions. Actually, the entire line was substituted there during that media timeout. Abdullah Roberts back in. That shot finds itself blocked, and it will go out of bounds off of the chest there of Ty Williams. Yeah, and Roberts almost rising up over the defender right there. It was a good contest on the outside, made him think twice, but it was after he had already left his feet, so forced him to get the ball out of his hands. Ty Williams was turning, thinking that one was going towards the rim, and all of a sudden, you're right, it hit him right in the chest and bounced out of bounds. But we got another update from our very own Reed Rosales, who just let me know, coming into this one, Chicago was 23rd in the nation in points allowed per game. They were only giving up 62. Already Trinity has 68 with nine and a half or so remaining in San Antonio. That average probably gonna tick up a little bit after this one. For sure, as this one, or as he goes in and Williams is gonna pick up the foul there. And so going to the line is gonna be Bryce Hopkins. <laughs> Hopkins. 
Hopkins knocking the first down at the free throw line. Second one coming here as on the court for University of Chicago. It's much of the same. Balo drives it down, puts it up, and will be going to the line for two here. Looks like the person who's going to be picking up the foul is going to be Thomas Kurowski. Despite the changes for Trinity, the memo mostly the same, continuing to attack the basket, playing very hard right now. Balo forcing the issue right there, creating the contact and earning the trip to the free throw line. First one on its way, and it's good. And so, of course, we've mentioned it a few times throughout the broadcast, of course, this being the Leslie Robinson Holiday Classic. Leslie Robinson, one of the first and definitely one of the, I'd say, founding members of Trinity Basketball, of course, was a Trinity University basketball coach from 1956 all the way until 1965. So that is a fantastic three shot there by Joe Barry to close up this advantage a little bit. But Leslie Robinson, one of the first head coaches of Trinity basketball, coached from 1956 to 1965 and was one of the biggest influences behind Trinity as a program being where it is today. And so, of course, we get to honor him with both the uh, Leslie Robinson Holiday Classic, as well as the Leslie Robinson Thanksgiving Classic, which we had earlier on this year. And it's always a great time to not only recognize the accomplishments of one of Trinity's first great coaches, but also to get a chance to play some tournaments against some competition that we don't normally get to. Yeah, I think that's been one of the most enjoyable factors of the last two days of action. Some teams outside of the region coming down to play in San Antonio. Some incredibly impressive squads, including this University of Chicago team. who's gonna have a lot to play for as they continue their year. Certainly a squad that I think will have enough to make a run in the NCAA tournament. But another benefit of these classics here in San Antonio, it's the opportunity for these teams to get some games in outside of conference play, a little bit of break in the action, a little bit less weight to them for that reason. That shot up there rebounded by Zach Fenn. And of course, one thing that Coach Smith, uh, Coach Jimmy Smith of Trinity mentioned during our talk with him earlier this week is as that's a great play there by Ty Williams putting it back up and in. But, but one of the things that he mentioned, of course, was that getting to play these games against opponents that, or that you don't normally get to play is really a lot of fun, mainly because it's still semi-early in the season, and so you don't have a lot of film on them. As Dean Balow passed this one out over to Zach Fenn, and the offense kind of gets set up here. Ball down low to Ty Williams. Williams puts it up and cannot get it to go. Rebound there by Eamon Kina. As Barry... Goes down, then backs out of it. Kina back with it. Outside to Hopkins. Hopkins kind of moving around a little bit. Back outside. Shot is up, and shot is no good there for Kina. As Trinity has the numbers here. Puts it up and cannot get it to go. And they are going to give it to Chicago. Coming on to the court, Philip Lawrence. And coming off is going to be Thomas Karowski. And already... We have passed the eight minute point, and so we are going to get another media timeout. But one of the things that Coach Smith mentioned, of course, was that because it is you know, pretty early on in the year, there isn't a lot of film, and so that makes these games a whole lot more fun for, for both sides whenever it comes to playing in games like these. Yeah, a lot more of a read and react style of basketball. Trying to adjust in game as opposed to really coming in with a foundational game plan that, that's gonna script the entire affair. I think obviously provides a challenge on the defensive end, but offensively gives you a lot of leeway. I do have to point out that 
YMCA playing in the gymnasium. I'm looking across the way. There was about a seven-year-old boy who was doing a pretty spectacular worm <laughs> across the way. I think any time the worm is being executed effectively, it deserves a shout out. And we're getting some angles here now. An absolute show, both on the court and in the crowd here <laughs> in San Antonio. He certainly has the Y down. I don't know about the rest of the alphabet. Probably not, but I mean, if he's got the Y down, that's one of the last letters of the alphabet. So, so if he knows the Y, then surely he knows the other 24. Maybe he hasn't gotten to Z yet. Maybe Y is the one that he just most recently learned. As this shot outside does not go, rattles off the rim, rebounded by Dean Balo and Coach Smith was more than complimentary of Balo as this shot goes up, does not fall. And we are going to get a whistle for a foul, so Robert's going to go to the line for two here. But Coach Smith, more than complimentary of Dean Balo, also complimentary of Christian Green as well, one, or, or two of the really big freshman forces here on this team. And one of the things that he said was, we knew that Christian and Dean were going to be really good, but they didn't think that they would be this good this early. And it's been really a great surprise to see how well both of them have really stepped up into their new positions. Of course, Trinity looking for kind of a face of the program after the graduation of A.J. Clark at the end of last summer. And so ever since then, they have been looking for kind of a person to lead this program. And they are definitely in good hands with these two very exciting, very talented young freshman players. And we talked earlier about Coach Smith being relatively new, of course, that pandemic season being his first, as there's a takeaway from Zach Finn. Had another steal to his season tally as Her gets the transition opportunity and knocks it down. He throws his hands in the air as well, finally getting one to drop for him. Talked about Coach Smith experiencing a lot of turnover on the roster in the last couple of years, but especially last season to this season. I think they had nine departures. So a very different looking group in a lot of regards. But the guys who have stuck around and Harvey and Brown and Braxton Berry, Roberts, making a big difference this year. They've all stepped up their games. And then obviously the freshmen coming in, adding a little bit extra, a nice spark for this squad. Talked about Christian Green. He's been everything advertised and a little bit more leading this team in scoring. But Dean Balo for that reason, as a freshman, flying a little bit under the radar maybe. The fourth leading scorer on this team, coming off the bench in every game, shooting about 37% from the three-point line and averaging about eight. He's been a very steady guard presence and it's been much needed for a team that lost a lot of primary initiators last year. As Chicago going to get this ball back here, 6.03 remaining here in this second half and most likely remaining in this ball game unless Chicago is able to pull off one of the greatest comebacks that we've ever seen as they get a great little play there by Luke Smith, the 6'9 freshman out of Richmond, Virginia. And of course, these Trinity players as this one is up and in. Great play there by Ty Williams. Trinity, of course, got to send a few players abroad this summer as well. Got to go over to China for, uh, for some Team USA action. Got to represent USA basketball in, er, in an international three-on-three -three competition. And so that was a very big accomplishment for, for quite a few of the Trinity players that, er, er, that you see both on the court and throughout this game. As that shot goes up and does not fall, rebounded there by Abdullah Roberts. And now it's going to be Grayson Hare who takes it around. Moving up to the top, Abdullah Roberts comes flying into the picture there. And now Grant Jacobs with the ball, moving down, pass over to Hare. Hare almost lost it, pass down to Abdullah Roberts. Roberts loses it now and taken in by Keenaw. Keenaw going to drive, pass it back outside. Shot is up from outside. No good. Rebound there by Ty Williams. Dean oh. Balo going to take a deep three. Does not fall. Fight for the rebound. It is taken in. Bryce Hopkins, the one who is able to get that one. 
as now this shot goes up and it rolls on in for Philip Lawrence, the freshman out of New York, New York. And now Hare gonna be taking this one down. Still about four and a quarter minutes to go here before we hit the end of this one. Trinity leading 78 to 50. Jacobs passed down to Ty Williams. Williams gonna lose the ball back outside to Jacobs now who picks it up. Shot clock under 10, down to 7-6. Shot is up by Balo, does not fall. Fight for the rebound, it is taken in by Hopkins. Now Hopkins gonna bring it back down for the Maroons. The pace still very quick here in San Antonio as Barry throws a shot fake right there. Operating on the inside, Smith with the kick out to Kana, who knocks down that three. So Kina cutting into the lead just a little bit more. Trinity on this end of the court. Been a lot of deflections the last couple of possessions. Trying to force the issue there as Grace and her settle things back down again. But I think that these guys on the court, after that line change came quite a while ago in this second half, look a little bit gassed, a little bit out of sorts. There were a host of Tigers waiting at the scorer's table. A timeout will be taken here. Under four minutes left in San Antonio, 326 on the board right now. Likely be some of the last substitutions of the day for this Trinity side, but right now you get a look inside the huddle as Coach Smith draws up a play see who it is coming out of the timeout that'll be set to execute it. And so with 326 remaining, we, you know, it might be a good time to start looking ahead towards, of course, future opponents. After this, Trinity will be going on the road. They have a tournament that they're gonna be playing up in Las Vegas. They will go to Vegas to play Clark University, and then they will play Pomona Pitzer. That game starting at 8 p.m. and 6 p.m. respectively uh, on the 28th and 29th. And then after that, they're gonna get a few days off, gonna be able to watch the New Year's fireworks, uh, possibly from their own homes, possibly here from campus, but they will return to Calgar Gymnasium and San Antonio, Texas, whenever they play Shriner University in a men-women doubleheader. That game will start at 6 o'clock p.m. on January 2nd and will be the first game of 2024 and the first broadcast of 2024 for Tiger Network. Definitely looking forward to doing that one with you, Luke, as, as we get set for the conference schedule. And what a game to bring in the new year. It was the SCAC championship game right here in Calgar Gym last season. A game that Triner University won, came right down to the buzzer. Tanner Brown's last second heave just coming up a little bit short. It's a Trinity team that's certainly gonna be looking for some revenge. And it's a Shriner team that's picked up right where they left off last year. I believe undefeated in conference play. Trinity will be exactly the same in the standings. So certainly something to look forward to, to bring in 2024. The SCAC has been absolutely incredible in terms of competition so far this season. A very, very competitive conference, especially compared to what it has been in the past with a couple of teams just running away with it. But at the moment, all eyes on the final minutes here of this Trinity versus, versus Chicago game. Dean Balo gonna be picking up a foul here. That one, will be his second of the day. So definitely still not in foul trouble. Only the fourth team foul for Trinity so far here in this second half. And it has been a relatively clean second half by both teams. Only five fouls by the University of Chicago, four fouls by Trinity overall. And it's been a very clean game overall as well, especially compared to some of the games that we have seen earlier on today. And of course, the first game that we got to commentate on yesterday, whenever there were a lot of players who ended up getting into some foul trouble. As we've got a timeout here. I think play will resume quite quickly. Coach Smith calling that one just to get the substitutes on the floor. So the referee 
brings them on, ushers them onto the court, and will give the ball back to Zach Austin, who's out there now for Trinity to get the ball inbounded. So Nate Thompson, Jackson Capellish, and I believe Carter Ruck are the players who just came on for the Tigers here. So just getting a few little depth substitutions in. Don't get to call a lot of these names too often as this shot is up from outside. It does fall there for the University of Chicago. 80 to 58 year score here with one minute and 30 seconds to go before we hit the final buzzer of 2023. And this ball is stripped away, taken away by Philip Lawrence. Some very physical defense there. I believe it was Alexander Batiste, the one who was able to force that one out. As this shot goes up, and this shot goes in, Alexander Batiste able to get the big three from the corner and make it 80 to 61. Here with a minute to go in regulation. At the moment, Thompson passes it over to Ruck. Back down to Thompson, and Thompson is going to get it up and in for his first points of the day. Don't get to call his name too much, and in fact, he's only played in four games so far this season. So, again, a very good opportunity to get a look at some new faces that we do not get to call out very often, as that was Batiste, who once again puts this one up and in. So now with about 20 seconds to go on the shot clock, 30 seconds on the game clock, Ruck takes a deep three, does not fall. Rebound there by Alexander Batiste. Ball. That shot clock turned off finally. Ball now in the hands of Batiste. Batiste down low, pass it outside, and this one goes into the visitor section of the stands. And so with 13.1 seconds left to go, we will get to see Zach Austin throwing this one in here to Carter Ruck. And it looks like they are just going to dribble out the clock. Everybody standing up on the sidelines. This game is over. And for the final time in 2023, the Trinity Tigers take a commanding 82 to 63 victory over the University of Chicago here in Calgard and they finish up 2023 with an undefeated 11-0 record heading into the new year. Or well, they finish up 2023 here on Tiger Network, 11-0 heading into the new year. Still have two games to play on the road in the tournament, but if they continue playing like this, they don't have a whole lot of threats to, or, or, or they don't have a whole lot of threats to be watching out for within the next couple of weeks because this is a team that is looking like it is firing on all cylinders. Absolutely, and it's why they got the win here tonight. Started out incredibly well from beyond the arc. Five of their first five, perhaps six of their first six from three-point territory. They didn't take a lot of them in that first half, but the ones that they did, they knocked down and helped them immensely to grow that lead. And something we saw several times over the last couple of days, just getting out to that big lead and controlling the game the rest of the way. Trinity has been absolutely stellar all season long. It continues here this evening. They remain undefeated, and they put up 20 more points than this University of Chicago team. A very good University of Chicago team typically gives up on any given night. In, in terms of points giving up, it was Jacob Milhouse who did the most scoring for Trinity. 17 points. He went six for eight, so f or, or six for eight from the field. Also got uh, a few free throws as well. Three for three on the day from the charity stripe. So a pretty good day for him on that regard. But six for eight from the field. Of course, also had some great scoring by Tanner Brown and Christian Green. But overall, just a fantastic day by everybody on this Trinity Tigers offense. And that will pretty much do it here from Calgar Gymnasium as we say goodbye to the Leslie Robinson Holiday Classic and say goodbye to 2023 here on Tiger Network. It has been a fantastic year of broadcasting from all of us and I cannot wait to go into the spring semester ready for more. 
The next time that we will be seeing you all will be on January 2nd, 2024, as the men will take on Shriner. That game starts at 6, and then, of course, the women will also be playing on that same day. Also against Shriner, that game will start at 8, or roughly about 30 minutes after the conclusion of the men's game. And then after that, we get into the spring semester. So make sure to keep an eye out on all of the Trinity Athletic calendars. And make sure that you are subscribed to the Tiger Network YouTube channel. Uh, make sure that you are notified for all the live streams so that you don't miss out on anything. But that will do it from us here from Calgar Gymnasium. Trinity takes a commanding 82 to 63 victory over the University of Chicago. For everybody in the control room, everybody down on the floor, Luke Terry, of course, my color commentator for this entire holiday classic. My name has been Caleb Reed. It has been an honor and a privilege to be commentating for y'all during this event. And we will see you all very, very soon. Take care, everybody. Have a very, very Merry Christmas. And we will see you all in 2024.